te kua te wairua, ki a rere, ki ngā tōmata. He arahi a tātou mahi. Me tā tātou, whai anā tikana a rātou mai. Kia mahu, kia ita, kia kōrea e nāgoro, kia pūpuri, kia whakamāua, kia tēnā, tēnā hui e taiki. Bow one spirit to exercise its potential, to guide us in our work as well as our pursuit for our ancestral traditions. Take hold and preserve it, ensure it is never lost. Hold fast, secure it, draw together, affirm it. Adventurous life. I was lucky enough to get an apprenticeship in, uh, as a farrier at General Blacksmith, and uh, that's where my career started. So, horseshoeing was a major part of my career. That's what I had to do to pay the bills, and it took me all around the world, and I had a lot to to, to give to that. But we, there was a point where horseshoeing wasn't safe in traditional blacksmithing, so that's when we had to to stop horseshoeing and concentrate just on placement. And that's what we're doing now. We opened our doors to the public and ran classes. And the demand and the uh, positive uh, feedback that we get from people who come here is, is astounding and, and truly humbling. Uh, a lot of them have very modern jobs, working with a lot of modern technology, obviously a lot of computers. And they come to a, a workshop like this and the, get their feet back on, on the ground and their hands dirty and it really lights them up. I'm very grateful to have young people like James here that are devoted to the craft and are willing to put in the mileage that it takes to be good at it. I, I met Rob by coming on one of his classes to make a hammer. I've been interested in blacksmithing since I left high school and then stumbled across one of the only opportunities to be a paid blacksmith in this country and got offered a job for them. You must have liked my smile. Everything made here uh, requires strikers. A striker is the job in a blacksmith's workshop of swinging the sledgehammer to work the steel. And it's really important for us to build a business that can be successful enough to employ young people like James to come in here striking. The striking's just not about hitting something with a sledgehammer. It's an integral part of making the tool. I feel it's a good way at learning this career as a striker. The striker must have a good knowledge of the forging process and work well with his blacksmith with a good rhythm to achieve efficiency. So here at the forge, we make everything. We make, we have a saying, we make the tools to make the tools. So we make all our top and bottom gear, all our pullers, all our tongs, and then from there, see, we make all the tools for the, for the village. We make adzes, axes, knives, scissors, chisels, hammers, and all these tools we make with traditional techniques and traditional ways. And our main, one of our main tools that put us on the map here and, and we're mostly proud of is our axe, and particularly our trade axe, which was an early trade item uh, for Europeans, even Captain Cook traded with early Māori, a trade axe. 
and it's one of the tools we bring to life. So the, the folded axe or the firewalled axe is a, a perfect example of um, old techniques. The good thing about this axe is we start off with a bit of scrap steel, can be recycled steel, and it's either iron or mild steel. It's formed and then folded, firewalled together, and then a piece of carbon steel, which is normally again recycled spring, firewalled into the cutting edge. So they're made of two pieces of steel. And the good thing about these axes is, and that's why they're so important to the Pioneer Smith, is that they can be made out of scrap iron. But the fire welding technique, a part in them is obviously the key to making them. I enjoy making axes with Rob because it gives me something to work to with the big fire welding elements in an axe. I'm working towards being able to make axes and that through chain making where I practice simple fire welds through a lot of repetition and a lot of practice. So fire, fire welding was the heart of all jobs before the Industrial Revolution and it is the first of our major blacksmithing techniques that was lost through the introduction of electric welding and other modern techniques. So fire welding takes a, a lot of practice. Um, this is why our folded axes and our other um, traditional tools are so important to us because they take a very intense fire weld. So we need to do that, we need the right coal, we need the right fires, it's all part of the um, authenticness that, we, uh, that we're keeping here in the workshop. We're extremely fortunate here to have this beautiful coal from the Stockton mine, anthracite coal, uh, which is about 350 to 4 million years old. It is the most clean, cleanest burning, uh, heat efficient fuel I've ever used. We will run our fire on about three shovelfuls a day, and without this we couldn't create the pieces that we do traditionally. We have a responsibility to save our crafts because they connect us to our past and they ground us in our present and they prepare us for our future. I'm very humbled to have this opportunity here at Kawa Forge for people out there wanting to pursue blacksmithing and I encourage it because we need more of it in this world. We need to try and bring that back with tradition. It's important to save what we have. We don't know what we've lost until we have it no more. <laughs>